Greetings, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And today we're going to be looking at the subject of prayer and how Jesus has, has come to teach us to pray. And his disciples came to him and asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. And, and in this time and age, I think it's a good thing to revisit because as we come to, to this time and age, it's, a, it's an important thing. And we face, we face troubles, we face um, obviously the COVID situation right now, we face the lockdown situation right now, we face economic situations right now, and we face personal situations in our lives. And it is, it is the same question that we come to our Lord and Savior, and we ask Him, Lord, teach us to pray. Um, and the Lord would give us the same answer. He would say, this is how you should pray. When you pray, you should say, Father. And this is an amazing thing, because when he, when he says this, it is a revolutionary thing. Because up to that point, um, people had found God to be far away, the almighty God. Um, God is personal. He is known as Yahweh. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law had made God to be far away. They had taken away the name of God and called him, taken away the name of God and made him the Lord Almighty, um, this faraway creator God, instead of the God who was personal, Yahweh. So when he called him Father, he brought him near. He said, he's the God who cares about you. He's the God who loves you. He's the God who is your father, who, who cares about you. And a father in the, in, in the Middle East is the father who is the head of the home. He is the most important person in the family. He's the one who makes decisions um, for the family. He's the one that, if you want to get married, you have to go to him for, for permission. Um, before you go... And embark on a career, you go to, to him. He has the final say. Um, so father means that you are acknowledging God as the head of your, of your life, of your family, of your world, and of your person. And he's the one who's going to direct your paths in your life. And he's the one who loves you and cares for you, and takes, takes care of you. And that's a wonderful thing, to begin a prayer like that, to say, Father, Abba, he is the one who is above all. And then he says, hallowed be your name. And this is very important for the rest of um, what he teaches about prayer, because every member in the family in the Middle East, or in Israel at the time, would see to it that honor and the name of the family that you are part of. Uh, the father's name would be held high, that you would not bring shame to the, to the family name. So you would do nothing or say nothing to bring dishonor to that name. Uh, when we say, hallowed be your name, we are saying, we will make sure that nothing we do brings dishonor to that name. Hallowed be your name, Father. We will hold that, that name on high, and we will obey you. We will follow your ways. And that, that's the glory that we hold when we, when we say, Hallowed be your name, we respect you, we love you. And when we say, Your kingdom come, uh, this family that we are part of in, in your kingdom, we want to extend the area owned by the Father. We want to see that kingdom grow. It's the responsibility of all sons and daughters of the, of the kingdom, of, of the Father. Uh, we want to extend the, the estate of, of the Father to, to further reaches, uh, to see the goodness of the Father go out and, and, and have impact in the world. I must get involved to see that the area that my Father controls so that His, wor his world can have impact on the earth and becomes a reality 
uh, not just as a physical thing, but as, as an ideal. And then we pray something that's, that's very, uh, has a great impact right now as we face COVID and the lockdown and the economic problems that we face. We say, give us day by day our daily bread. Give us what we need to survive. And we know that people are struggling and we have daily needs. And people, you know, would buy food that we need day by day. Uh, we get food parcels. And we ask to be treated the way that, that, um, oh, sorry, I just got a little guy here. He's my new roommate. Sorry, this is uh, Atlas. Sorry, he wants to be part of the talk. <laughs> sorry, Atlas, you stay down there. <laughs> um, and um, we all need to survive, and, and God will help us to survive. Um, he, and we ask to be fed day by day. And he will provide for us as we ask him to provide for us. Um, so we request for the needs day by day so that there is no anxiety for tomorrow. We ask for today, the needs that we need for today. Also, we ask, and this is quite important because... God deals very, very importantly with the, the forgiveness of sins. Jesus came to forgive us, to bring us into the peace that we have with God. Forgive us our sins. And Christ covers our sins. But he also wants us to have this attitude of forgiveness. That when people repent of their sins, we forgive them. Um, he wants us to have the same attitude as him. So that they would see him in us. So forgive us our sins. Forgive us our debts as also as we forgive everyone who is indebted to us. So we ask to be treated the way we treat others. So with other aspects of this prayer, responsibility is, is ours. We, we take responsibility for our actions. We forgive because we have been forgiven. And this is a, a, a strong thing that's, that's placed upon us. We take responsibility for who we are in Christ because of what Christ has done for us. And that's a wonderful thing. I respond in dealing with others. Then it says this, this thing, do not lead us into testing or into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. You know, the child of, of a father, of the father, of Yahweh, is always conscious of his weakness, of her weakness. We know that we are weak. And we need our Father to protect us every day. That we, we need to be kept from temptation because, because we are people who struggle with temptation and testing. And only our Father in heaven can deliver us from that. So the emphasis is on not us. In this, in this line here. But the emphasis is on our Father. We, we focus on our Father's deliverance and not on our ability in this, in this section. So we, we are weak, but our Father is strong. And we trust in Him all the way. And that is why we pray the Lord's Prayer. It's not a religious ritual that we go through it is something that we we can really think through and pray through regularly and that's a wonderful thing but the rest of this passage keeps on going and he keeps on teaching about prayer and it's it's got a lot to do with faith 
and it's about building our faith in life. Jesus asks a question here in verses 5 going on. And he talks about a friend. And you go to that friend who's asking for something. And he asks a question. And the question in verses 5 to 7, it is all one question. It is a strong question with demands. And it has a strong yes or no answer. And the, the uh, person ans asking the question is expecting a definite no. You know, he wants some bread to feed his family, but he's going late at night. And the person who, who wakes up says, but, you know, I've locked up for the night, but he's a friend. And he says, but because you're my friend, Okay, not because not just because not just because you're my friend, but because of the village and because of who I am, I'm going to get up and I'm going to give you what you need. Okay. Should he fail to give anything, he might ultimately be labeled by the whole village as not being generous, as not being who he has been built up to be. Okay. So we mustn't make the mistake of thinking, okay, he, he gave it just because he's his friend. No. He gave it because of who he is. Not because he's his friend. It's because of his relationship. Yes. Not just because of the relationship, though. But it's because of his name. Okay, so this passage is, it's because of his name. So the reason that God answers your prayers is not just because you're his friend, not just because our relationship has been restored, but it's because of who he is. And this should give you great hope, because God answers your prayers because of who he is. He is God. He is your father. And he won't let you down. He is good. He is love. He takes care of his people. All these things are who he is. And that's important. He answers his prayers, because, not because we are his children, but because he is a father. It is his character. The reason lies within God himself. And he loves you. Okay. This is the amazing thing. There's no need to repeat your prayer. Because he hears you. We can ask once and wait. With expectancy. However God will bring needs to your attention and that time we can ask. But he says that we can also knock and go on knocking. He says that we can ask and go on asking him for the Holy Spirit. He says that we can seek and go on seeking. But we must not be like the pagans and go on like repeating babbling prayers. And that's that's what he, he doesn't want us to do. We can keep asking him, but we must not be babbling, doing repetitive prayers. And that's what he's talking about. We must be real with God. And that's what he's talking about. Because he says, when, he, when we pray to him, we can keep asking him. That's fine. But we mustn't keep on babbling. Because like a father, when we ask for bread, will he give us a stone? If we ask for a fish, will he give us an eel or, or a scorpion? Or an, if, we ask, if he asks for an egg, will he give us poison? No. 
He is not that kind of person. He is a father, a good parent. And a child keeps asking every day till it asks for its daily needs. And, it's, and it can ask every day for its daily needs. That's not repetitive. That's fine. You can ask every day for the same thing. That's fine. That's not repetitive. And if you were a parent and a child asked for bread every single day, you would give the bread every day. And that's fine. So this is our Lord in God, and He is good. And while on the subject of prayer, our Lord in God, our Father, our Abba, who sent Jesus to die for us. Jesus had dealt with the daily needs of the body um, often while He was here. He also stresses the daily needs of the Spirit, and we can pray for that too. We can pray for the Holy Spirit Every day, the Holy Spirit lives in every believer. And that is something wonderful. And we can pray for the Holy Spirit every day. And because we are a new creation in Christ, we are baptized into this new creation, the Holy Spirit. And that's a daily thing that we can pray for. We need to drink every day of, of the Spirit that comes from the Lord Jesus, from our Father. Our Heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to us, not if we plead, but if we ask. And if we ask with expectancy. Let us pray, and let us pray with confidence to our Father. Because he is good, because he is God, because he is our Father, and because the Holy Spirit is in us and is available for us, and because Jesus has taught us to pray. And with that, I'm going to close with the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Lead us not into temptation. praise you and worship you. Amen. Until next week, I will see you again soon.